what's going on everybody it's your favorite auntie mo we are back for another episode review of pose yes this is a season finale season two episode 10 in my heels before we get into the review if you have not done so just yet go ahead and subscribe to my channel let me know what you think of this video with a thumbs up or thumbs down and hit the notification button so you will know whenever i upload new content y'all i loved this episode of pose it gave me everything and then some I started off kind of mad and in my feelings because I was like, <laughs> pose FX, y'all gonna catch these hands if something happened to Blanca. But I didn't have to put them paws on nobody, y'all. So I hope y'all are ready for the review. I'm ready to give it to you. Let's get right on up into it. So Blanca's in her salon, finishing up nails on one of her customers. You can clearly see Blanca is sick, okay? She's sick. You can see it all in her, in her eyes, all in her face. She just looks worn out. After her customer leaves, she looks up. Who walks in but pray tell? Oh, it just warmed my heart. Block is like, um, I don't believe I have you down for an appointment. Pray tell is like, well, bitch, I heard you take walk-ins. And they went and they embraced y'all. They finally made up after nine months. And I bet you that was nine months of hell. Block is doing nails out of her house now. She says, you know, it doesn't have the glamour of a storefront, but she doesn't have to worry about no nosy ass, hating ass, scamming ass landlords. She ain't got to worry about insurance. She ain't got to worry about root, uh, paying rent, none of that. She's doing all of her nails out of her house. And she says it's lonely there. You know, all of her kids are gone. Her and Pray Tell are just catching up. She's saying that Damon has sent her postcards, you know, from Europe or whatever. He's doing good, living his best life. Angel and Poppy, they living their best life over there in their apartment. She was saying, of course, um, well, um, Pray Tell was saying that Ricky is still blowing his back out. They still together. Pray Tell is like, how come I haven't seen you at the balls? Like, just because, you know, you don't have a house right now, you're not walking in, it doesn't mean that you can't show up. And she's just like, it doesn't feel the same if I don't have my kids there with me, y'all. Now, when it first started off, it started off in May 91. I was 10 years old, getting ready to be 11 years old the next month, come that June. And it just brought back so many memories. The clothes, the just the culture of it all, y'all. I was so happy to see Pray Tell and Blanca finally make up. Because I'm telling you, y'all, I can feel the pain in between them not being together. I was like, no ma'am. No ma'am. Blanca Pray Tell. Yes. Blanca's in the hospital, y'all. Pray Tell had to end up taking her to the hospital because when he was over there at the house, he was like, when is the last time you've been to see a doctor? She's coughing hard. Like I said, her eyes look sunken in. She just looks super, super worn out. So Pray Tell ends up taking her to the hospital. Of course, this is a result of, you know, her, her AIDS progressing. Um, as she's there, you know, she's laying in the bed. It's just really sad because she's like, this is not the way that I pictured myself going out like this. So she asked Pray Tell to go into her purse and pull out this little notebook, y'all. She's actually started her, you know, her last will and testament. And so she's having Pray Tell read it back to her, make sure she didn't leave out anything. And so Pray Tell is like, you know, um, he's reading it back and, you know, she's going to leave Angel all of her jewelry and her clothes. Pray Tell, she's leaving her boom box, her CDs and all her books to um, Ricky, no, to Damon. She's leaving her cookbook with all of her mother's recipes. And to, um, I think to Poppy, she was going to leave her pet dog, whatever, if he died. I mean, if she died. And she, and uh, Pray Tell was like, what the fuck, bitch, you ain't got a dog who's Poppy or whatever. Tippy, that was going to be the name of the dog. She said she hadn't got a chance to get around and give the dog yet. So Pray Tell was like, nah, bitch, you need to leave this boy something real. To my dear Poppy, I leave you my memoirs. Make sure they don't forget about me, y'all. That part made me cry. It made me cry so hard. Like, Blanca. Blanca. Ooh, if Blanca goes somewhere, y'all, I'm going to glory. I'm going to glory. I can't take it. I can't take it. Pray tell is like, look, uh-uh, no ma'am, we not having that. He goes, he gets her address book. He likes, look here, you fought for me, bitch, now it's my time to fight for you. He's going to her address book, he finna call all the family, have everybody come out and be there for Mother Blanca, okay? Y'all, so Electra's at the hospital there, Lulu is there, um, Angel is there, Pray tell is there, they're all there, right? And so Electra 
I like to see Electra in mommy mode. Electra is growing on me. She, I can't lie. She's starting to become my favorite one out of all the characters. She is my favorite one. Now, she's just fussing at everybody. Fussing at Pray Tell about bringing in cheap ass flowers because they can bring in germs. Fussing about the drapes. Fussing about the curtains. Fussing about the light. Just fussing about everything. So they're like, girl, if you don't sit your goddamn worrisome ass down somewhere. But she's trying to make it comfortable for Blanca. That's what I thought was so damn cute. She's yelling at everybody because she's trying to get shit straight for her daughter as she calls her her daughter so pray tell ask electra lulu and angel like how come i have not seen any of y'all down here at the balls like what's going on and they tell him like look here it's nothing but men on the council since vogue has come out all the butch queens have taken over all the damn categories we only got one or two categories and it's like a boys club y'all steady up there judging us looking down on us like y'all don't know what it's like to be a woman and walk in my heels bitch but you can damn sure clown me and tell me when i'm not not this and I'm not that you can clock me left and right but you don't know how hard it is to be me so Lulu and Angel agree because the lecture was like look here y'all you, you need to do something about that because y'all ain't right so pray tell is like all right well I'm gonna go ahead and go holler at the council yeah I didn't know everybody was feeling like that my bad so pray does end up going and meeting with the members of the council the other queens of the council and so he tells them what everybody's concerns are right saying that and um some of the other MCs were saying as well that they've gotten some complaints as well that the butch queens are starting to take over all the damn categories so one of them comes up with the idea of doing a category Butch Queen first time what was it? Butch Queen first time in drag and so basically the MCs which are them, all the, the butchly manly men there, they would dress up in drag and they would walk in a category in the ball and at first Pray Tell was like look here y'all we gonna do it, we gotta do it right because I don't want to make fun or downplay anything that these women go through every day, everything that they have to go through just so they can feel comfortable. So if we're going to do this, we're going to do this right. So they basically tell, pray tell, pass the motion, bitch. And so he passes the motion. And so they're going to do that in the next ball. Y'all, so Angel go busting down the doors over there at the Ford Modeling Agency. She's trying to holler at Miss Ford like, bitch, what's, what's really hood? Like, I ain't heard from you in a couple of weeks, damn near a couple of months. Like, what's going on? I haven't booked any gigs or nothing. So, Miss Ford was right in the middle of a goddamn meeting with somebody else. She had to tell him, oh, okay, baby, go ahead on that lobby. I'll wait for you in a minute. So, she tells Angel, come on in here, sit down. I had called you because I needed to make sure I had all the information first. So, Angel, like, well, what information are you talking about, Miss Ford? She says, well, I got a call from one of the creative directors that um, they were being deceived. And so, basically, what had happened was she was um, on a set of one of these shoots that she was doing. One of the boys or one of the queens from the ball clocked her and noticed who she was and was like, yes, Angel, I always liked you when you would walk the realness categories. Mm-hmm. Was being real petty, real fucking petty and hating. So, while Angel is down there getting her vogue, you know, pictures and shit like that on, she look up at the balcony, see that same hating ass stylist that was there, go and tell the creative director who she was. So she already knew something was up then. Creative director end up calling Miss Ford. Everybody that knows about it now, now her being her, um, about her being transgender. And so all the um, contracts that she have, everybody's pulled their contract. Wet and wild, Revlon, hell, Maybelline, whoever the hell she was with, everybody has pulled their contract. Now everybody knows what's good. Now, Miss Ford isn't against Angel. She just basically tells her, like, you know, basically, baby, the cat's out of the bag and nobody's going to take you serious. The world ain't ready for you right now is what it is. So, y'all, Angel is devastated. She ends up crying in Miss Ford's lap. And Miss Cry, I mean, Miss Ford actually consoles her because she, like, she actually likes Angel, but she, like, look here, you know what I'm saying? Money talk and bullshit walk, and I just can't have you fucking up my bag like that. I'm sorry. Y'all, so she goes back and she tells Poppy, ooh, and y'all know Poppy ass is like, baby, don't worry about it. I got you. Fuck what they got to say. I got your back. Don't worry about nothing. I'm going to take care of you. Poppy been coming. The pop. B. Poppy coming through, y'all. Y'all, so later, Poppy come back to the house. He got these business cards or whatever, right, that he done went and got made. I think Esteban Enrique, something like that, whatever the hell his name is, he's going to be a talent agent. Well, he wants to start his own talent agency, 
helping girls in the scene that want to be models. He wants the girls that everybody else is throwing away, who people are going to turn their backs on, yada, 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 right? So he done got these business cards. He all out there on the piers, at the ball, trying to get all these girls recruited, right? These girls is like, look here. I ain't nobody taking your goddamn ass serious. Boy, you can get your little big head ass on up out of here. They not taking him serious for nothing. They just shooting his ass down left and right. I felt so bad for Poppy. Because Poppy like, uh-uh. Don't a model agency want my girl? Then I'm finna start my own model agency. God damn it, y'all. So later, Poppy ends up, um, Poppy and Angel end up going back over there to the Ford agency. They end up rolling on Miss Ford. Like, look here. I got these business cards. I'm trying to do the damn thing. Look here. And she's telling him, like, look, I don't know what you expected from me. Like, I can't give Angel no job because everybody going to pull their contract. Like, what the hell is it that you want me to do? Poppy, like, now nah, here, I want you to take me under your wing. Teach me what you know so I can start my own shit. Like, help a nigga out. So Miss Ford is like, you know what? I'm going to give your ass a cubicle and I'm going to give your ass a phone. I'm going to give you a couple of weeks to book something. If you ain't got nothing booked, toodaloo, I'm going to holler at your ass. I'm going to have to let you go. And I thought that was dope of Miss Ford. Because Miss Ford, no. If it wasn't for the fact that everybody know about who Angel really is, I think she would have kept her on. Because Angel is bad. Yeah. So Nurse Judy ends up going and checking on Blanca. And Blanca's getting a little bit better. Her breathing is a little bit better. But she's still not out of the clear just yet. She asked Nurse Judy, like, you know, keep it real with me. How much longer do I have? And Nurse Judy's like, you know, of course with AIDS, nobody knows what the expiration date is on it. But we do know that as long as you keeping yourself healthy, you know, you're doing all the right things, that you'll be fine. Blanca asked nurse judy like could this be the chemicals of my nail salon that possibly like help progress to get me more sick and nurse judy is letting her know like well it damn show didn't help you that's for sure so she tells her you gonna have to find a whole nother profession like something else to do but angel's like well what else am i supposed to do for money this is my job this is my livelihood so nurse judy um suggests to her that she go on apply for disability angel is like i'm only 30 years old like I don't want to be out here on disability. Like, I want to be out here doing a damn thing, get my own coin, my own bag. But Angel, I mean, um, Blanca, baby, you sick. You have to slow your that Mustang down, Sally. You have to slow down. This is what it is. So, pray tell comes to visit Blanca in the hospital, right? And we find out some good news about Frederica. She got arrested for first-degree felony arson. Somebody seen her fleeing the scene of the nail shop, Blanca's nail shop, that she, uh, she set on fire. The judge has revoked her bail because they say that she's a flight risk. And her lawyer goes and visit her in jail, and she says that that's exactly what the fuck she was going to goddamn do. She says that anything she feels bad because she stopped another woman from accomplishing her dream. Because she said that, you know, she, she says the judge is an asshole. He don't want to... Um, um, give her bail because he's a man and men look down on women and they try to knock her hustle and everything that we do and she's not going you know feel bad for trying to do what she felt like she had to do yada 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 but she says the only thing that she feels bad about is that she stopped another woman from seeing her dreams through but bitch now you're in jail where you need to be and I'll feel bad for you move right along from there y'all so Electra is teaching Cubby Lamar Ricky Praytel and the other three gentlemen from the council how to walk in some heels. Y'all, it is so goddamn funny. Now, of course, Ricky gets out there because Ricky's a dancer. So, you know, he can do any goddamn thing. He gets out there. He kills it in them heels. Cubby and Lamar, they do good in them heels as well. Y'all, when it came to the men of the council, they looked a hot goddamn mess. Praytel tried to walk in his heels. He gets mad because Electra gets in his ass. Basically tells him to stop fucking complaining and just goddamn do it. So, he gets mad. He walks out. Um, Ricky had to go out there, chase after him, and like calm him down, like, nah, like, baby, what's up, boo boo, like, what's going on? Basically, uh, Ricky calls him out, like, I see that you're afraid to express your feminine side. Pray tell tells him that his father was an abusive asshole. Whenever he showed the slightest bit of feminism, that his father would slap it out of him, eventually punch it out of him, eventually beating it out of him, because his dad would say that he didn't want his son to grow up to be no damn sissy. That's fucked up for any man to do that to their damn child. That's fucked up. And I'll be the first one to tell you that. That's fucked up. So Ricky ends up talking to him, talking about, you know, making him feel better about it or whatever. So he goes back upstairs, work on them heels, y'all. And they're going to end up pulling that shit together. <laughs> y'all, so Damon is back. He is back. He is back. He is back to be there with his mama, of course. He ran up to her, gave her the biggest hug and the biggest kiss, y'all. And that put another lump in my throat when I was there. I was like, oh. He was so excited to see his mama. He was just kissing her all over his face. So... 
Damon is a house father himself. He says that he has his own house. He has his own kids up there. And uh, where Europe, whatever the hell he is, he is doing a damn thing, y'all. I am so proud of Damon. Like, he is my son. I'm just so damn proud of y'all. So, it is the Mother's Day ball, and it is a house versus house showdown. House of Ferocity versus House of Wintour versus House of, I forgot the other house of, but it was the bomb. They were doing a runway category. They did a voguing category, um, realness category, which Miss Electra Abundance won. She looks beautiful, I will not lie. Her and Lulu both. I thought Lulu probably would have won it, but Electra is technically the only real one because you know she got the bottom surgery, so it would make sense for her to win the realness category. I, y'all, for that whole, what was like 10, 15 minutes, that whole part, I, it was just a complete jam out sesh, section, god damn it. They were voguing, they were death dropping, they were, uh, it was, it was the bomb, it was the bomb. If you didn't watch this episode of Pose, if for nothing else, watch this part, because baby, I'm telling you, it felt like I was in the ball, snapping, Finger all there with them. They did that. Y'all, Electra ends up winning Mother of the Year. Angel and Poppy end up getting engaged. They um, proposed to each other. It was super cute. And then Damon and Ricky seen each other. They caught up real quick. And then it was time for Candy Sweet Refrain category. Damon pushed Blanca out and Blanca sung the national anthem, the Whitney Houston version of the national anthem, which to this day, no other national anthem in this world is better than the Whitney Houston national anthem. I put money on that and I will fight you in the street barefoot with no bra on, okay? Whitney Houston is the, the her rendition of the national anthem was the absolute best, period, poo, okay? Blanca did it. Blanca, oh, was so dramatic, bitch. Damon pushed her out in a wheelchair, and she was like, oh, see, can you see? It was all so beautiful and shit. Then, when it got to the crescendo, baby, she pulled off a jacket and took a little robe off, stood up, had the little red outfit on, looking ever so Whitney. She looked beautiful, and I know it took all her little breath out of her, because, baby, she was tired as hell afterwards. Damon had to go put push the wheelchair up to her for her to sit her ass down, but she did that. There was nobody else that needed to do the category after that. She won, hands down, period. Pill. Y'all, come judge for me now. <laughs> yes, come judge for me. <laughs> come judge for me, yes. Oh, come judge for me. Electra ass on that damn microphone. Come judge for me. That's right, come judge for me. <laughs> Next up was the Butch Realness first time in drag. Y'all, it was the bomb. Ricky dressed up as Janet Jackson. The men from the council were dream girls. Cubby and Lamar were just straight, they were beautiful. And then when Pray Tell came out, at first, I thought it was candy. I was like, whoa, what the fuck? What is we doing? No, it was Pray Tell, y'all. Pray Tell looked beautiful. He looked gorgeous in drag. The hair, the out. He was timid at first. He was scared. He was walking out, kind of like, mm. But everybody was kind of hyping him up. You kind of see them shadows and like, oh, bitch, hold on. Okay. He got into it. He did the damn thing. Dang, he did the damn Angel thing. and Poppy are leaving for Berlin the next day. Tomorrow, y'all, Poppy ended up booking her a damn gig out in Berlin like he said he would. So they were getting ready to pack up the next day to go to Berlin, right? So um, they're telling Blanca bye or whatever. So Blanca's sitting outside um, the club or whatever waiting for Pray Tell to come out because Pray Tell had to take off all that goddamn drag. He was like, oh, no, ma'am, I can't do this. So she's outside waiting for Pray Tell to come out. As Blanca's sitting outside, she see these two little kids over there, kind of in the corner in the cup playing. So Blanca like, hey, y'all come here. So she asked them to come over, they come over, whatever. So she's like, what's y'all's names? And it's a little boy and um, another transgender, you know, little girl. And so um, he's like, well, my name is Quincy and this is Chris, but um, she goes by Chili. And so Blanca's like, well, do she got a mouth? Can she talk? You know, so Blanca tells her like, look here, baby, you have to learn how to use that mouth in this world. You know what I'm saying? Talk, speak up, say what the hell going on. So she introduces herself. You know, she says her name is Chili. And so she asks him, like, how old are y'all and where are y'all sleeping? Y'all, they are, I don't want to mess it up because I wrote it down, y'all. They asses are 14 years old. 
14 years old, got kicked out of their parents' house, probably for being gay and transgender, and they're sleeping on the piers. They're stealing and dumpster diving just to survive. That part, that crush, I don't understand how people can turn their back on their babies because they they were born gay? Who, I, I, I don't, I don't. I don't know. That's not for me to understand. That is not for me to understand the mind of somebody that could be so cold-hearted. Yes, I said it. To be cold-hearted and fucked up and every other word that I could use to describe you to turn your back on your baby. Really? So Blanca's like, uh-uh. Y'all not sleeping out on them damn piers. Not tonight. Not no damn mo. We finna go home. So pray tell comes outside. You know, he getting ready to push Blanca on a wheelchair on down the street. He's like, oh, so who do we have here? It's like, this is Quincy and this is Chili. And so it was like, okay, well, where are we going? And Blanca's like, we finna go home. And Pray Tell was like, all right, well, shit, y'all hungry? Let's go get something to eat. Y'all, the parallels between Chili and Blanca and Quincy and Pray Tell was, oh, it was like a younger version of them. So I am so excited for this next season of Pose. This season gave me everything and then some. I hope y'all enjoyed my reviews of it. If y'all watched this episode, please let me know. Please remember to like, comment, subscribe, and share. And Auntie will not only see you in the next video, but she will for damn show me see, see me in the next season of Pose. Thank y'all so much for watching me. Auntie, love you. Peace out. What's up, y'all? Do me a favor and share the video. Please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Let me know what you think and um, hit that notification button so you will be up to date when I upload my latest videos. Ahala.